quick disclaimer before we begin, the PEMF podcast does not contain any medical advice and the content is for informational purposes only. And if you have any health concerns, please speak to a healthcare professional. The compliance and regulatory information we mentioned today is just a guide. As the information is always changing, we advise you not to use this episode as complete advice and encourage you to get your own legal advice on all products you are looking to purchase or use in a professional setting. Welcome back to the PEMF podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about medically registered devices compared to wellness PMF devices. Uh, We're going to be talking about if either of them are better than each other or if you should actually pick maybe one over the other, for example. So for anyone who doesn't know, what actually is a medically registered PMF device? What makes it medically registered? So just basic terms. Um, Manufacturers have the option with PMF devices. We'll go into this a bit more in detail later. Uh, but they have the option when they're making a PMF device to register it as a medical product or a non-medical product. And when we say a non-medical product, we're talking about an electronic device. So uh, a toaster, a hairdryer or something like that is an electronic product. It's used in the home and you can register a PMF device as an electronic wellness product or you can go down the medical route and have medical approvals applied to that device. Do all PMF devices not have to be medically registered for them to actually get to market then? So no, it's a good question because that's where a lot of the confusion comes. And one of the reasons why PMF devices don't need medical backing is that the the therapy itself or the PMF devices themselves are seen as such a low risk product. So whereas if we're talking about a pacemaker or an injectable or something like that, obviously that has to go through the medical channels and it has to be medically approved. Um, But PMF devices are seen, and a lot of manufacturers will say this, and a lot of sellers will say this, that PMF devices don't come with any risks. And the reason they're saying that is it's a completely non-invasive product. Um, It travels through the body. It it creates natural magnetic fields. And the effects have not seen any significant reason to make those devices harm anybody in any way. So the electronic products device agencies and the medical device agencies have kind of put this product into a gray area where it's like you just need to have the right approvals in terms of an electronic product. Okay so if a device is medically registered though does that make it better then than a device that isn't medically registered or is it is there any difference? Again great question because this is something that happens in the PMF industry a lot. Um, so there are devices that will be medically registered and they'll go through different channels, which include the MHRA for the UK. Uh, you've got the FDA in the US and you've got, uh, other countries that follow other regulatory bodies like Health Canada and, and lots, lots more in, depending on what country you're looking at. Uh, we'll, we'll mainly focus today on the European market and the US market. So when we're talking about the European market, we'll talk about, um, CE. And when we're talking about the US market, we're talking about FDA. So a lot of manufacturers that do go down the medical route, um, they, they like to make claims on their websites as in, you know, treat yourself, go for a medical product. Do not use a product that hasn't gone through the medical backing. Um, so one of the things we did before this episode was look online and see what some of the manufacturers are saying. Um, so one of the manufacturers that has a medical approved PMF device said when evaluating a pulse electromagnetic field device the presence of medical certifications can be significant indicator of its quality safety and efficiency and this for me is just one of those uh, myths that we want to bust a little bit Um, because there is a number of reasons for this so having a medical approval on a PMF device might sound to the normal user a great thing Um, And there are some benefits for it, which we'll talk about. Um, But it doesn't, for me, make this statement that we just read out a significant indicator of quality, safety and efficiency. For me, that's uh, completely false. So what we're talking about is we have to get a device that has some kind of certification. So we're not talking about products that have just been put together in a shed and thrown on the market. Obviously, these products aren't going to be regulated very well. We would never recommend a product like this. Um, But saying that, so if we give an example, you've got medical CE and non-medical CE. To say that one 
that has gone through medical CE and one that has gone through non-medical electronic CE is better than the other just for the fact that it's got a medical grade um, is, is for me is it's, it's not the correct information. Um, we can give a good example for a device that we have put through. So uh, NuMed, we sell a number of different PMF devices, as, as you probably all know from listening to these podcasts. And we kind of sit on the fence with a lot of things and we try to educate people on the differences of these products. Um, so this is something that comes up quite a lot is the kind of medical argument. And NuMed itself, we sell medically registered products and we sell non-medically registered products. And for me, the quality, it, it varies for other reasons, not for the fact of the grading. So we ourselves, we created a device through our um, family business, which is a medical manufacturer, and they provide medical devices to the uh, hospital industry across the world, and they're medically proved business. And we could have very easily created our PMF device that we've put onto the market under the medical means. However, we took the decision not to do that. And that's what we'll talk to you a little bit more about in this episode and the reasons why we did that. Um, there's a few reasons that we thought we would do this initially. And one of the main ones was a commercial decision because medically registered products can sometimes have difficulties getting into certain countries. They have different medical boards and it can prevent a lot of different hurdles from getting into those countries. And we wanted to be able to launch our products into the most amount of countries possible from, from day one. Um, so we made a commercial decision to go through the electronic um, registration instead of medical. But, and, and we also maybe assumed that it might be easier to run uh, the certifications to put it through CE electrical instead of CE medical. However, we were quite wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the reasons I say that is because medically, devi medically registered devices are as assumed that they're going to be used by a medical professional. So someone that knows what they're doing in a medical setting. And these people are assumed to have gone to university and different degrees to get to where they are. So medically registered products, assuming a professional is using it. And if the intended use is for medical use only, those devices will go through a certain amount of accreditations for medical pro products. Devices that you put on into the home market, and we're talking about wellness devices through an electronic means, they have no idea who is going to get their hands on those products. So if we talk about a hairdryer, for example, nobody knows who is going to use a hairdryer. We have to assume that they have any kind of level of intelligence. I know that sounds crazy, but... Um, you know, the, the regulatory bodies have to assume that. So the tests that have to be done to be put to put a product into a home market is actually a lot more intrusive than we at, we thought originally. Um, so we took that route to, you know, to commercially get the product out there as much as we can. But some manufacturers, coming back to the original question, some manufacturers kind of make the claims that the medical devices are better when it comes to PMF. Um, and they're saying that the devices have more quality, more safety and that sort of thing. And in some markets that may be the case because like I said, some markets it's difficult to get medical products into and that's because they have to go through a number of different hurdles to get into them. But into the majority of the market um, and FDA, CE and that sort of thing, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. What we need consumers to understand through this episode is that they should still be looking for products that have certifications. So when we're talking about the European market, we're talking about CE and we're talking about medical CE and non-medical CE. And when we talk about the US, we're talking about FDA. So, and the alternative to FDA, if you don't want to go down the medical route, is UL certification, which is a little bit like CE and actually also the US accept CE. So it's, it's a bit of a minefield, <laughs> but we'll get to the point in this episode at the end. Um, when also some of these um, manufacturers we found are making these other claims and one of the claims in which people say is that um, they have submitted their device to a medical authority and the medical authority have approved their product and they're giving the impression that they have sent the device to a university hospital and they've opened the device with clinical gloves and they've looked inside and they're thinking, yes, this is a clinical grade product. It doesn't work like that. 
the way in which a lot of people get see, um, get medical approval, if we talk about the FDA, you've got three different classes. As we mentioned before, PMF is, is classed as a super, super low risk product. So it comes under class one. And class one can actually be, by most manufacturers that have the approvals, they can list the product on the FDA within a day. Um, and But what they're doing is they are officially saying we have done all the testing you need us to do for class one um and when you kind of look into fda class one an equal equivalent is is just an electronic product um so class one devices are seen as low risk and they're like example bandages gloves stethoscopes those sorts of things so that's what they're talking about when we talk about pmf it's a class one product Class two product is moderate risk, and that comes under things like electric wheelchairs, infusion pumps, surgical drapes, diagnostic tests. So where a product can actually create harm, say for example, a device is diagnosing someone and it misdiagnoses them, then obviously that can lead to harm. So that's a class two product. And a class three product is like a pacemaker, something that is like surgically inserted into a, a person. Obviously these devices, do go down more of a formal route of sending the device for clinical evaluation. But when people are talking about PMF devices, and most PMF devices in the market won't need to go down this intrusive route. They just literally will fill out some forms on the FDA website to say, we have done the necessary testing and we're, we're saying that we're a class one product. So it's all about how those sellers and, and um, manufacturers are kind of perceiving the message of medical grading. So. Sorry, we've gone quite a lot in depth there, but um, it's trying to explain the messages that are going out to the industry and, and what that means. Yeah, no, definitely. And talking about the claims, kind of going on to that, um, is there different claims that manufacturers can make if a product's like wellness registered or medically registered? Does it actually differ? Yeah, exactly that. So if a manufacturer decides to go down the medical route, a benefit for them, and because people might be thinking, well, you know, what's the reason to go down this medical route if, if there's no benefit to do that? Um, there is benefits. One of the benefits is that they can make medical claims for their products. So they can, a lot of the time, and, and it can come down to the fact they have to do some clinical trials to present this, to evidence this. Um, but they could sort of say that their PMF device that is attached to the knee is good for arthritis. Whereas a non-medically pro registered product can't make those claims. So in a commercial standpoint, it really affects the way you can market a product. So if you're looking at a PMF device that hasn't got medically approved um, status, what you'll probably see in their adverts is aids better with sleep, aids better with recovery, helps with energy and these sorts of things. So they're doing their best to promote the benefits of PMF. Um, but they're not allowed to make claims on specific conditions, whereas medical devices have a bit more of a Pandora, pa Pandora's box to open when it comes to making medical claims. Um, so that is one of the benefits of, of registering it as a PMF device under the medical grade. Okay, so if it is going to make it like harder for them to market things and like maybe harder in that kind of sense, why would someone choose to not do the medical registration then and just go down the wellness route? Yeah, so the main, the main reason to answer that question is, is kind of the route that we went down with our device. And that was to open the market and make it more accessible to more countries and more um, people in those countries without the need to kind of get stuck into customs a lot and, and go through different regulatory bodies that prevent medical products. Um, you actually see a lot of the time that some of these manufacturers have a medically approved product and non-medically approved product. Um, so they're going down both routes because there's pros and cons to going both. Um, it would kind of be better if these medical agencies would just say, right, we're classing a PMF device under medical or non-medical and, and make it less ambiguous um, because then the manufacturers could just choose a route that is, is advised and they could make it easier for themselves. But like I say, the, the biggest benefit really for a lot of these manufacturers is that they can register a device under electronic and they don't have to go through so many hoops when getting to certain markets. So that's not most markets. So 
it doesn't really affect like the UK, it doesn't really affect Europe, it doesn't really affect the US, but some countries like Canada, um, Brazil, China, those sorts of big countries, they're a lot more difficult to get into from external manufacturers when a product is medically registered. And that's a commercial decision that some PMF devices will take. Okay, so just then to kind of compare it, um, why would someone just go down the medical route and only want to medically register their products? Yeah, so, and again, that's a very good reason for people to do, to, to go down that route. Um, I think a lot of them use it as a bit of a status to say, you know, we have medical backing and these are the statements we're seeing go out into the market and saying that their devices are better because they have medical backing, um, which we're kind of trying to, get rid of that myth to start with. Um, but there are a lot of other benefits and, and those benefits are obviously, like I mentioned, um, giving a uh, medical advertisement and using their marketing abilities to use conditions as part of their marketing. Um, there's also reimbursement benefits as well. So some countries will get reimbursement for certain treatments and PMF is starting to pop up on those reimbursements as well. So and to get a reimbursement, a lot of the time, it has to be a medically registered product. Also, when it comes to clinically evaluated devices. So, again, this is another thing that is a little bit up in the air and it's a bit of a gray area, but um, it's easier to use a device that has medical status in a clinical trial. You can use, however, devices that don't have medical backing in clinical trials. There's just more hoops to go through and there has to be like a safety if, um, efficient conduct study completed before before the actual clinical trial can go through so there's benefits for both um the the other side of thing when it comes to the medical side of it is that those accreditations can sometimes be quite costly and quite expensive um especially in certain countries so again it's kind of a route why a manufacturer would choose not to go down the medical route um and go down the wellness route so cost is is kind of bad in terms of the medical route and it can block you from certain markets um so again but having that marketing ability to say conditions can really help especially if someone's looking for pmf to treat a certain condition okay so just kind of like with the multi-therapy mats episode just so everyone kind of leaves with the correct message what is the message you're trying to kind of give out to everyone yeah so the message you're trying to tell to people today really is first of all definitely ask a manufacturer if it has certifications but what we would kind of want the takeaway to be from today is that don't be alarmed if they come back and say to you it's not a medically approved product, but it has gone through CE or electronic certifications and that sort of thing. And to try and navigate some of the messages online that medical PMF devices are significantly better in terms of quality and that sort of thing when it comes to non-medically re re uh, registered products. As long as it has some good certifications and you can look at the right certifications for your country, that's the main thing here. However, we don't see it as the be all and end all when looking for PMF device. You know, as we've mentioned, PMF devices are such low risk products that whether it's a medically registered PMF device or a non medically registered PMF device, we, you know, there isn't a huge, huge difference in terms of what people can expect from that product. Um, so that's, you know, that's the kind of message we want people to walk away with today, really. And if you now have any questions about medically registered products and non-medically registered products, make sure to leave them below this episode and we'll answer in our next PMF Talk episode, which is a little mini series we do where we answer your PMF related questions. And while you're down there, make sure to follow us, subscribe uh, on whatever platform you're on. And if you are on Spotify, to leave us a five-star review. Uh, it massively helps the episodes and helps us get bigger and better guests on every single week. Thanks for listening to another episode of the PEMF podcast.